Okay, Kings of War fans, it's been a while, but I'm back with a battle report between the Redkin and the Abyssal Dwarfs. It's 2,000 points using Helpy's Rift rules in a local campaign on the Empyrean Plain. Hello there! I like to watch battle reports to get better at games, so I started making short, summarized battle reports that focus on learning points. So welcome to my channel, Newbie Dice. Do like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you enjoy my videos. Welcome back, and this is part of our local campaign. So there is a backstory going on as we move from plane to plane, and it's based on the results of the battles that's fought during that period of the campaign. We do have a good and uh, Gorat and Elios alliance, so there's two alliances. And for the following is the backstory, and if you're not interested, you can skip ahead to the battle based on the timestamp that's going to be flashed on the screen now. With the Empyrean Plane, there's a very, very interesting scenario rule called Winds of Change, and this is, in my opinion, the most fun and interesting of them all. So let us me go into details of it. Let's see. All right. So from round two onwards, a spellcaster with spellcaster level one or more, when they finish on their half of the board, they will take damage based on the round number. So round two, two damage. Round six is six damage. Uh, if they finish on their half of the board, yeah. So if they are on their own half of the board, they will take damage, but their spells are stronger. They will add one dice. Okay. And if they finish on the opponent's half of the board, they will heal wounds based on the round number, but their spells become weaker. They will subtract one dice. So this is very interesting. And um, if you if your spellcaster take damage uh, until it's more than its uh, nerve value, it will automatically be routed. So there's some uh, healing and inspiring terrain in this game as well. The channeling table, there are some interesting channel channeling table results for the Empyrean Plane. There's Radiance of Life, which is cool. Thunderous Charge, which is very pretty strong. It's basically being Chan for free, right? Especially, but of course, only if your unit is not disordered. And there's this Hammer of Measured Force effect, but it also works on ranged attacks. And there is... Uh, uh, healing D3, there's a honey Wings of Honey Maze effect, and there is this effect which is pretty strong. Ignore all modifiers when rolling to hit, and this is great for ignoring stealth, cover, and your movement and shooting penalty, especially if your unit has no steady aim. For spells, there are two interesting spells. Celestial Restoration lets you heal D3, and uh, on hindsight, coupling with the plus one dice of the scenario, it might be quite strong. I think I did not take in that into consideration when I was planning my list. But nonetheless, uh, Redkin already has Radiance of Life and Drain Life. I think I did not need extra healing spells. Sharp Eye Incantation is a pretty cool one plus one to its range attack value up to a maximum of four plus. So my list... Pretty standard uh, vein of, of, of my Redkin list. There's two Shock Troop Hordes, one Shock Troop Regiment. Tunnel Runners, Vermintide. I brought a Death Engine Spewer to take advantage of that uh, channeling effect that ignores modifiers. That would mean that I would not have movement and shooting penalty, ignore cover and stealth and whatnot, right? So I have two Brood Mothers. One is my campaign version of the group Brood Mother. That one has earned plus two attacks from leveling up. So it actually has seven attacks, which is why I gave her the Blight Staff because Blight Staff uses your attack value. So he has seven shots as well. And I gave him a level Spellcaster level two just for the channeling dice and the Blessing of the Gods. So gives her elite on everything. Melee, shooting, and uh, what's that called? Drain Life. I have Scud and Tangle and my favorite Brute Enforcer over here. My 
opponent's list, the episode dwarf's list. I'm constructing based on memory and pictures because we kind of lost the list. But uh, I think the Immortal Guard is actually a Black Souls regiment, but he has a regiment of dwarves. Okay, three troops of gargoyles, one horde of decimators, probably with elite on it. Okay, I don't have the items. So he has two horde of lower obsidian golems, probably with items on them as well. Uh, one grog mortar, two heavy, uncle heavy mortars, uh, hex caster with weakness. The iron caster probably has the sharp iron. He has sharp iron incantation on the iron caster for sure. I'm not sure about his other spells. And the old master on ancient winged half breed. Let's look at our deployment. I got the bottom, he got the top. And I'm going to label the units out here. So a few things to take note. There's a heal in the middle, which is nice to block line of sight from his shooting somewhat. And there's this building on my right side, which is pretty annoying because I did not want to... I, firstly, I can't deploy hordes there. And I didn't want to deploy units there because it might be too cut off from the middle of the board. We are playing Dominate. So I did not want to put a unit there. And immediately, my opponent kind of capitalized on it by putting his Ancient Winged Half-Breed there. So this building will provide some denial of uh, landing zones and charging zones. So it will be a bit of dancing around. There's a unit of gargoyles here on the right flank as well. It's shrouded in the shadows. So let's move on to turn one. He got the first turn and he went first. He looked at that immediately. He put that ancient winged half breed in this advantageous location. He can't be charged that in the flank, but he's staring down my entire flank already. Gargoyles uh, shuffled forward. The gargoyles on the left, as you can see, it stayed behind the forest because I do have that scud that can shoot lightning bolts and might just kill it outright. Uh, Hexcaster is over here. Ironcaster is over here. So what the Ironcaster did the most of the game is to cast Sharp Eye Incantation on the Uncle Heavy Motor. So one of them is hitting on fours. So immediately on top of one, it took out this tangle over here because he realized that my list only has one Bane Chant source. He has two defense six units. Taking out Bane Chant is profit. So that's what he did immediately. Top of one, I already lost my tangle. Uh, in games following after this, I always hide my tangle from him. <laughs> so next, bottom of one, I shuffled everything up, kind of hoofed it. My two hordes popped in their plague pots. That's the green purple color token over here. Um, so the thing is we have to deal with this ancient winged half breed. So the way I moved up all my stuff on the left, right side is to block landing zones. So the side of my brute and fossil cannot be charged because it couldn't land. The shock side of the shock troop couldn't land. This uh brute mother couldn't land this uh this death engine couldn't land, this uh, Vermintide couldn't land. So this uh, over here is the limit of his uh, 20 inches, so he couldn't charge this black unit over here, so I did not need to protect the flank. And this Brute Mother could not be charged as well, so it's facing down towards the Ancient Wing Tough Breed, so that if it lands, it's something that I can see and I can charge. So that's how I align this uh, demon spawn as well. It's a little bit conservative in its movement, but it's to protect this whole empty space over here where the uh, ancient winged half breed might land. So I didn't want the ancient winged half breed to land anywhere here. So that's how I shuffled forwards. My death engine shot out the gargoyles over here. I probably took that uh, ability to ignore modifiers to do so. Next. So uh, let's look at the Ancient Winged Half-Breed. Without a good landing zone in the middle of the board, it decided, opted to fly over the building and continue staring down my flanks. So it's out of charge range of my Demon Spawn and my Brute Mother, so I can't uh, ground it. Uh, over here in the middle, you can see that my Shock Troop with the Plague Pots went down. Why is that? So the Decimators took the uh, channeling effect to ignore all hit modifiers, so it ignored my stealthy, ignored the cover from the heal blocking the most of my base, and it shot it down, basically killed it. Um, I think he wrote pretty well that he could put, you can see that there's some extra wounds put in over here. I think uh, from Hexcaster uh, getting that damage dice from rolling, right? And on top of that, the 
mortar security it it dealt so much damage to the shock troops that he could afford to shoot some into this second unit of shock troops over here so um this gargoyles flew here to block the charge to both shock troops i think uh i'm not sure but i think yeah this opening is not wide enough for my for my shock troops to pass the space between the gargoyles and this regiment of dwarves over here it's not wide enough uh, same for the hex cluster i think uh it moved up in a way that my my tunnel runners couldn't land and fit against the decimators yeah because it needs to drift right uh drift to the side because of this uh gargoyles and it will have hit the the hex caster if it drifted to the left so this way he blocked his entire front line and there's still a dragon in my rear in my flank so let's see what happens next bottom of two um, because my horde of shock troops couldn't charge the obsidian golems my brute enforcer went in instead my demon spawn went into decimators to stop it from shooting Tunnel runners position themselves for a charge in a later turn. I think it's positioned in a way that it just moves straight, uh, clearing the clearing the uh, blocking terrain, and just needs to make one pivot to charge into the 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 uh, abyssal decimators. Shock troops hot. The only surviving one went into the black souls and i think i wavered it because this die here says nine damage and it did not charge me the next round so not sure what happened there um it could be immortal guard but i'll show you what happens next so uh, over here i continue to position my forces in such a way that he couldn't charge any of them the rear of the regiment is protected by the death engine the death engine is protected by the building no landing zones the queen is protected by the regiment this brute mother is protected by the vermin tide so the only thing it could charge is the vermin tide which is fine with me because it's a chaff and my regiment would be able to charge it later so with that top of three what does he do with his half breed no good charge targets once again he continues dancing he flies now to the rear center of my board threatening almost everything down here okay so let's see so what he does with this regiment is it moved back so that his uh, uh, firepower his artillery could fire at my shock troops so i'm not sure whether it's immortal guard that has no waiver stat or it's uh, black souls that wavered and moved back but i think he moved back to get cover from the field as well anticipating my shooting so decimators uh retaliated and this Obsidian Golem couldn't multi-charge because of the terrain over here and the unit over here. Could, it couldn't slide and make way. Uh, Gargoyles went into the flank of my tunnel runners, took some damage, but without Bing Chan, I was more likely to survive. And yeah, let's see what happens next. Bottom of three. So over here, I double-charged and killed off the decimators. Um, I protected the side of my my demon spawn from the dragon with these two units the tunnel runners are sticking slightly forward past the the demon spawn so this uh, unit in front couldn't charge the demon spawn um, i had my brute enforcer chaff up the the low obsidian golem and it didn't kill me last round it's still pretty sturdy it has 13 15 nerf with already two and defense five so i think it wavered that's why there's this yellow token over here and because he moved this uh, regiment backwards, my sh shock troops was able to flank the golems, which might be a mistake on his part. Okay, of course, without being chant, um, wounding on fives, dealt a good number of damage, but that's not enough to kill it. Um, these units continue to shuffle, so I move in a way that, uh, let's see. Ding, 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 ding. I think this uh, spewer is out of line of sight, out of the 45 degree front arc of the uh, winged half breed. And these two units just 
one faced it in the front and the other flank is protected. And so I, I couldn't really protect it against everything anymore. Okay. So there's a flank here, there's a rear here for him. And on his turn, I missed a picture. So I'm just going to describe what happened. His uh, artillery took out my demon spawn. The golems uh, countercharged and took out the shock troops because the shock troops were partially wounded from shots earlier. Okay, the, the uh, ancient wing half-breed took out my tunnel runners from the rear. So one unit down, two unit down, three big units down. Okay, so let's see the picture there. So you can see three units down. Uh, in retaliation, what I did was uh, the death engine. Oof. Uh, I think the death engine double charged. The death engine, this might be bottom of five. I'm not quite sure because I've missed quite a few pictures here. But the death engine, I remember, shot down the regiment of uh, dwarves over here. And I think it multi-charged to kill off the obsidian golems over here because it was on the hill. So it gets an extra thunderous. Okay. And what else happened? So I chaffed the low obsidian golems with the brute enforcer and my brute mother that is Queen Kariga charged at the ancient winged half breed. The model is here, but actually the base is this green base over here because it's too big, it's blocking stuff. So it's actually here after it took out the tunnel runners. My uh, brute mother charged it and take note of the scenario winds of change. My brute mother is on the opponent's half of the board. Every round, you heal wounds based on the round number. So it's going to be healing four, five, and six wounds on top of the one wound every round from Radiance of Life. So I made a calculation and I think that there's a very good chance that you will be able to survive a few rounds against the uh, Ancient Winged Half-Breed. So for my opponent, he took out the Brute Enforcer, but looking at the game coming near to the end, this is Dominate. And he only has four unit strengths left with the Horde of Golems and the Ancient Winged Half-Breed. For myself, I have three from this uh, um, Shock Troop Regiment. It did not fight the whole game. It was dancing with the dragon the whole game and the dragon just flew overhead. But now it's there for its three unit strengths. And each of my units are one unit strength each. One, two, three, four. Another four unit strength. So near, uh, this is a picture at the end of the game. Um, the Amotas didn't perform and it took some, uh, I'm, I think it maybe dealt some damage to the death engine, but it survived. Um, the rest of my units hit behind this hill, so it couldn't be shot at. So, and look at that, the Brute Mother survived against the, uh, the dragon, the Ancient Wing half breed. So with that, I pinned it down for the rest of the game and I won the game on scenario. So let's look at some learning points. Well, um, especially for Abyssal Dwarfs, you tend to take a lot of uh, powerful units that have very little to no unit strength. So that's your artillery and your hex caster, iron caster for search if you bring the obsidian golem. And you'll really be lacking in unit strength. So that is something to consider when you build your list, especially uh, Abyssal Dwarfs. And cost of spells. I'm not sure if that Sharp Eye Incantation is worth it because it's only buffing the one mortar. Uh, from a 5 plus to a 4 plus. Granted, each mortar is a each, each hit from a mortar blasts into an average of 4 hits, right? But I don't know, you know, you have to bring that hero, you have to pay for that spell, and you're not casting the other spells that it comes with, so it's a pretty hefty investment. Whereas uh, the channeling effect is awesome because it's free, right? Basically, if you roll it, you get it. That ability to ignore modifiers is wonderful. Dancing against flyers, so 75 millimeter dragons and dragon-like creatures. Uh, it's much easier to block the landing zones now, so I think it is a great move by Mantic from 2nd Ed to 3rd Ed to put it on 75 millimeter bases. They are uh, scary, but they can be managed this way. And in the end, it still charged my rear, but I think I delayed it long enough. I did delay for the first three turns. It only got into combat in the second half of the game. 
charging into the tunnel runners and and um in the end got pinned by my brute mother if it wasn't this special empyrean plane scenario maybe the brute mother would go down but that's all it would kill most likely and well um there's also some credit to him forcing me to adjust the way i move my units you know the way that i have to compact everything uh, block the size of everything i think there's some pr profit for him there as well so well that's how the dance against flyers goes eventually if he decides not to uh, go in and he bite his time he will eventually get a rear you can't uh, protect against it forever most likely chef chef is awesome delay to win so he delayed with his gargoyles with his hex caster uh, while i delayed with my brute enforcer and sometimes the brute mother itself focus on scenario so always have a rough plan to win on scenario when i lost that tango and the shock troop horde at the start of the game i was like oh man but i uh at that point, I already knew that, okay, I still have a very good chance in this game because I have quite a lot more unit strength. I need to get my unit strength into the game. And true enough, that regiment was uh, one key piece that helped me win the game. And that's all for this battle report. Hope you enjoyed it. The next game will be on the Empyrean plane as well, but it will be a 2v2 game with us, uh, 2v2 rules, which I'll share in, in that battle report itself do like subscribe and hit the bell notification so i'll see you in the next video bye